going to take a look at paths in Game Maker. I have already created a sprite and an object. This is spider looking thing. I've called it sprite enemy. I've called our object object enemy. And I have nothing in the object except a create event so far. So in order to get started with paths, we first have to create a path. We do that by right over here, right clicking on paths and click create path. It's going to give us this editor. We can name our path. And then it gives us a couple of options here as far as the as far as how we draw the path. So the straight lines gives us just that, straight lines, and it's a chiseled effect. So we have little corners here that our objects will follow around. If we choose smooth curve, it will smooth those out and it, our nodes are still out here and it allows us to adjust the curves if we choose closed it will close our path so it will give us a loop that our objects can follow right over here this little arrow shift path will allow us to shift the entire path up, down, left, or right by the increment that's in this box. So for instance, if I choose 5 and I choose up, it will move our path up by 5 points, down, right, and left. Right down here, we can see our X and our Y of each node. And as we select these, it'll highlight that node in blue. And you can see when we move the node, our X and Y coordinates will move as well. When we click in the middle of these nodes, so for instance, if I click here, it will add another node and allow us to adjust the curve in more detail. So once I get the curve the way I want it, We're going to go to our room. And in our room, I'm going to delete that for right now. In our room, I have a path layer. And the way I got to that was right down here under Create New Path Layer. And that allows you to drag your path onto your room. We can see it lays it out there for us. And we're going to go ahead and put our object in our room as well. So we're going to drop back down to the instances layer and put our object in the room. Now I'm going to intentionally leave our object over in the upper right hand corner and I'll explain why I did that in just a second. Going back over to our workspace. Under our create event, we're going to scroll down and I do have drag and drop selected. You can do this in code as well. If we scroll down towards the bottom, you'll see a section called paths. The first one we come to is start following path. So in our create event, we're going to start following path. We have to tell it which path to follow. So we can have multiple paths in here. We're going to choose path enemy tell it what speed we want it to travel what do we want to happen when it gets to the end of the path so in our case we want to loop that means it's gonna start basically it'll go all the way around once it gets to the end it's gonna keep going and we'll leave relative to false for right now and I'll explain what that is in just a second We'll go ahead and play this so we can see what happens. And notice that our sprite actually went off the screen, but it's going in the path that we selected. Now, the reason for this is because when we put our sprite in our room, I left it in this upper right-hand corner. What's happening is it's using this path to follow 
but it's doing it from the position that we put the sprite. So we move the sprite over here and we click play. The sprite will stay there, but still follow the path. That's what that relative checkbox does. So if we come back here and choose relative to true, what happens is regardless of where the sprite is in the room, it will automatically jump to where we put the path. If relative is false, the sprite will stay where we placed it in the room. So now we have it set to true, relative to true. So what's going to happen is when we hit play, this sprite, instead of being the upper right hand corner when it starts, will actually be right over here. So now let's check out some of the other options we have for our paths. We're going to create an event with a key pressed spacebar. And in this event, we're going to add stop following path. We'll play it. And notice that our sprite is going all the way around our path. When it gets to the end or the starting point, it's going to keep going. When we hit the space bar, it stops on the path because of this. So now we're going to add another key press event. And this time we'll do it with digits. So we have a one pressed. And on our paths, we're going to set the position along a path. And this is going to be on a scale from 0 to 1. We're going to put 0.5. We'll click play. I'll hit 1. And you can see that it jumps to halfway around my path. At that point, once it jumps, it keeps moving. And it's the same place each time. Now if we click relative, leaving everything else the same, when I hit my 1, it jumps halfway across my path based on where the object was when I hit 1. The other options we have are get position along path, so we can figure out where it is along a path, and we can set that to a variable. We can set the path follow speed. So this allows us to change the speed that it's going on the path. And we can get the follow speeds and we can set that to a variable so we can tell how fast something is following the path. The temp along here on our variables is just indicating whether it's a local variable or not. 